Do you think the game has changed since you played? Look, I, I think it definitely has. You know, uh, it's come leaps and bounds. And being, you know, uh, what, 15, 16 years out of the game, uh, it's come in leaps and bounds. So obviously, love to get your perspective. But in saying that, you know, um, it come about in '93, just between Michael Long, you know, and that changed everything for all of us and made the pathway for you blokes obviously a lot easier. 15 years on, but. Look, uh, he consulted with Michael McLean and rung a few other Indigenous players at the time and they made a stand and, you know, two years on, you know, uh, 95, the racial vilification law came in and that changed everything. And it wasn't just most probably us Aboriginals too, it was a lot of other ethnic groups that were copping it as well and that's in mainstream Australia too, uh, you know, uh, they've, they've copped it just as bad as us, you know, the Italians and the Greeks and so forth. So I think the AFL made a great stand then. It hasn't... Um, seeped into society I suppose as, as much as we would like you know through my time and even out of football it hasn't gone there but the AFL has done a great job so far and especially you know I'd um, love to see what you know obviously the crowd side of it you know that's changed as well so you know for your you know you don't get that banter obviously it's still round here and there but you know your thoughts on the last most probably five years it's gone leaps and bounds yeah no nah, since I Came in, obviously, pretty young, 18, 18 year old. Um, I guess, like I said before, um, it's the players who played before us that have made the pathway really easier for us boys. Um, but in saying that, it's still got a way to go. You see, um, you know, blokes like Eddie Betts and um, Liam Wright and blokes like that still getting vilified online. And, um, you know, that's the thing that we want to stand about. You know, um, our brothers, seeing, seeing brothers, um, you know, getting taunted. You know, by people who, who don't show their faces is is pretty tough. So, I think um, the you know players like you know, like Nicky Mimley, Adam Goods, you know, they they took a lot of the brunt of it, but um, they've made it a lot. Most like you guys have made it a lot better for us, and um, yeah, it's definitely definitely a great environment for Indigenous players um, to play the game now. We got here upside down. What Indigenous player did you admire growing up? Oh, yeah, I had a few um, when I was. Pretty young, it was Andy McLeod, um, so I followed out later a little bit because Dad did. Um, so he was just flashy and one of the best to do it, I reckon. Um, and I was lucky enough to be coached by him flying boomerangs, which is awesome. Um, but then um, probably Buddy Franklin, uh, just deadly. And yeah, obviously got to play against him as well um, since I came in. So um, just playing on the same ground with blokes like that. And, um, you know, obviously still playing now, so it's pretty special. So yeah, probably. Him. But um, yeah, when I was young, it's. Um most probably my uncle back home in, t in the hometown, Uncle Lance White, he was the first thing, because we only got ABC, so, and then we got the winners. So then I started seeing the Cracker Brothers and Morris Rio, and I was like, wow, how good are these blokes? Michael McLean, you know, Lally Bamblett, like it was just freaky. So once I think, and the Cracker Brothers were first and foremost, and then I actually got family from WA as well. Yeah. So uh, obviously Steve and Michael over there was an absolute yeah. god. God, so he's most probably the arguably the best player not to play, well he's most probably the best player not to play AFL, so a lot of those blokes, you know, you grew, grew up, I grew up admiring, and then, you know, you got your local talent around the territory, you wanted to be like, so, you know, the Kaji Duns and all the Longs and Riolis up there, you know, you wanted to be like one of them, Cyril Rioli's dad uh, was really good as well, and Noel Long, um, absolute ornament to the game, so, nowadays, you know, you all just give us a buzz, and I think, you know, um, look, Buddy is, you know, that's probably my, He's not my modern day favourite because obviously Charlie is. I, I, I just love watching Charlie. You know, I had spent time with him at Marsh College, Ashgrove as well. So there's that bit of that feeling there. But I think him and Liam Ryan. Liam Ryan reminds me of one of my cousins as well. You know, they, they remind you as well. Yeah. So that's unbelievable. So he's most probably um, up there as well. But I think yeah, Charlie's the modern day yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Nah, that's it. Next one. Have you ever experienced racism on the football field? Yeah, look, unfortunately, um, you know, you copped it at a young age back home in the, back home, which was really hard because uh, you copped it because uh, back home we weren't white enough to be white and we weren't black enough to be black. So I copped it from both sides there, which was a bit hard, um, but it was sort of between that 12 to 14, and then it sort of grew out of that and we sort of all matured a little bit. And then when you came to the AFL, you know, obviously, um, yeah, it was just uh, pretty rife um, going on. And actually the game, in 1992, my first game, first game at uh, Victoria Park, yeah, just copped it all that day and I came over to Michael McLean and said, this big bloke's giving me a bit of hassle and it was, uh, yeah, Michael McLean gave him three or four and 
I didn't even see one of them, so I reckon there was a more, more there. And look, that, that's how it was. And look, um, I'm glad. Like we sort of stood up in the dressing room, and, and your teammates knew it. And um, look, a lot of, weren't a lot of Aboriginal players playing in the competition then, so you know, uh, a lot of teams didn't have you know Hawthorne and Geelong and these blokes didn't have many you know, Indigenous players playing from Collingwood even at the time, Carlton, you know, all those players. So um, look, it was it was tough and. Um, I always went to Michael McLean or Gilbert McAdam. Um, we had Russell Jeffries. I had a real good leadership, good contingent here, and obviously um, Roger Merritt, who you know didn't stand for that stuff as well, being you know, non-Aboriginal. So look, um, it, was, it was about speaking up, and I suppose we spoke within each other, but we didn't go out to authorities or anywhere else, or go to the club or the president or you know the coach. But we spoke within our own little groups and saying, hey, we'll catch that bloke next time, you know, things like that. So, how was your journey, especially in the AFL? I know junior footy you would have copped yeah. a lot, but AFL, how? Anything at all? No, um, I've been pretty lucky to be honest. Um, like I said before, you, you sort of see you know, stuff online and things like that, um, and blokes copping it that way. But for me, I've been pretty lucky to be honest. Um, and like I said, it's because of the, the blokes who... The system has worked, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. It's, it's getting so much better. And, um, clubs are a culturally safe place for, for players now. And um, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's what all the Indigenous boys are sort of striving for, is young blokes to come in and just feel safe. And, and the AFL is yeah, coming leaps and bounds, which, which is awesome. And obviously still there a little bit, just through that online stuff. But it, on the field, it's, yeah, I think everyone's just united together now. It's, um, <laughs> Why is Sir Doug Nichols round so important? Oh look, it's fantastic. It gives us to, a chance to show our culture, which is first and foremost. Um, look, uh, I, I, I find it hard because um, I never got a chance to play. You know, never got a chance to represent. But in saying that, we got an opportunity to get this going or this format or something you know of indigenous content within the AFL platform and uh, with the 1994 All-Stars we got that opportunity to do that and obviously the All-Stars and that and that's just fallen away a little bit obviously with COVID and a few other logistics you know. I do get a bit jealous honestly I, I um, don't watch any live ones I watch the replays yeah. you know, I, it, I don't know why but uh, yeah it, it, it does hurt because you never got the opportunity to play and for you blokes to carry the flag, carry the culture, carry communities, carry yourselves, uh, it's a fantastic week. Um, then you get multicultural, I wish we can get more involved in that as well because yeah. we're part of that as well um, and uh, obviously all those multicultural uh, and ethnic players too, they're, they're a part of that indigenous round as well. Yeah. You know, so the AFL have done wonders with it. It's gone leaps and bounds. Oh man, it's it's a showcase. Uh, uh, the best thing about it, everyone looks forward to it, and it's and it's a real build up. And I think it just showcases, you know, Aboriginal culture. But I think within saying that, you know, with statistics, with health and education, nothing's really changed on that side of it. But footy has been a real winner. Yeah. And without footy, uh, a lot of our people would be lost. Just a quick one. Um, you know, obviously you rate the racism stuff that you face on the field. How did you, I guess, overcome that um, and sort of stick to actually playing the footy as well and having that goal to win the game? Like, I feel like if you're sort of copping that on the field, and um, you know, I feel like it'd be pretty hard just to focus and still try and get the job done. Um, yeah, sort yeah. Of facing I, that. I think the initial uh, interaction is. Uh, Obviously, verbal, physical, emotional—you know, everything comes out, and it's a heat of the moment stuff, and it's all there. And then sometimes it's done and dust, and you're left at that. And then, like I said, you might want to—you know—hopefully one gets kicked on, and you're trying to look for him, you know, throughout the game, things like that. But then when it's start gets taunting, then you know he's thinking about it, it's on his mind. You know, he's targeting. That's when it gets a bit difficult. And you know, like I said, that time with Monker, I went straight to Mike McLean. He went over and bang and. Yeah. And I thought, he, Michael McLean's smaller than me, but you know, uh, he was actually Golden Gloves boxer. So I was thinking right at the time, um, Monkey's a big man, he's about 6'9", I'm only 6'1", Mad, Mad Joe's much probably 5'10", at that, you know, and uh, so look, he, uh, Cracker Brothers much probably a, a real good example of it, you know, uh, missed plenty of games, just for, and it was just, yeah, the jibes, the taunts, quick hit, miss a week, come back, nothing really said about it, nothing done about it. And uh, you, you sort of move on, and you know it'd be interesting to see you know, how the 
how they felt. I was speaking to Michael McLean, yeah, you know, he just copping it week in, week out. And he said, I just tried to beat him, you know, tried to beat him with the ball, tried to win. The doggies weren't a bad side back in those days as well. So you try and beat him with the footy. Yeah. Um, in the early days, obviously, you can whack him a little bit. <laughs> Give them one here and there behind the ears, a little clip behind the ears, um, things like that. Yeah, and the, you know, but the game has changed for the better, and like I said, that physical side of it is good too for the players. So you know, you get durability out of it for you blokes, you know, and obviously you want a life after football instead of walking around crippled like you know a lot of us older blokes, you know, the, or yesteryears that um, sort of struggle. And um, the AFL are doing wonderful things now through concussion, where everyone's getting involved and putting heads together and doing the right thing. So. It's a difficult one, look, you, um, it, and it's it's an individual thing, how you were raised as well. Um, yeah. I was raised pretty strong and staunch, so um, I'd take it in and try and beat them with the footy, or I'd try and, like I said, set them up and try and knee them in the back, take a hanger, tackle them as hard as you could, little things like that, and you most probably wouldn't shake them up in hand after the game. So, it's, so you know, that happened at you know, junior level and stuff like that, so it flowed through, and it got less and less and less, and obviously, you know, for you blokes, um, and, and you know, it's fantastic what they have for there because it's gone to country for you. Yeah. You hear of it once on the, on the you know, you hear of it on the news. How, how good's that? Yeah. So it's flowed out there, it's flowed into the crowd, you know, all sections, you know, uh, staff, you know, canteen staff, all that sort of stuff. Everyone's involved now. So, you know, you taunt or jive or, you know, say a racist comment, slur, you know, you're kicked out of our game, yeah, no matter where you are. So, you know, like I said, the AFL have done some wonderful things. So, and it's just helping, you know, um, you know, obviously we're talking about reconciliation and all this sort of stuff, you know, that's AFL's already, already done a step in the right direction for the last, you know, 15, 20 years. Yeah.